It's a great honor for me to be here and to receive this uh, Explorer Award. Uh, I, I want to speak of the future of ultrasound, and of course, for me, the future is uh, ultra-fast imaging. Uh, to explain you the future, I have to go back in the past first, and um, I have to recall you that the technology has evolved a lot with the power of electronic components, and today we are at this ultra-fast imaging technology level. Uh, all of you know that conventional imaging gives you a pulse echo mode image, but it takes some time to get an image. And uh, the idea that we have when we begin to work on ultra-fast imaging was to make an image in one shot. You send a plane wave in a medium, you record all the echo, and inside the computer, you do what we call the time reversal processing. And it gives you an image. What is nice is that this technology gives you an image in one shot, that is to say you can get 10,000 frames per second. Why did we need to do this? And how it works? When we begin to do this in our lab, it was this huge electronic uh, system that you see here, which was built from a, a time reversal mirror architecture. And it was an old ID that I get. It was in 83. I suggest that time reversal can be used to make a very fast imaging system. And it was only in the 1998 that we built this system because the technology was not ready before. In 98, we can build this, but this system was nice, but to make a final image, it takes some time. You have to do at least 40 minutes of processing to get ultra-fast imaging, which is not so ultra-fast. But we are sorry, but we begin like this. Uh, after, there was this nice adventure. In our lab, we have this prototype. And when uh, we decide to create supersonic imaging with Jacques Souquet, uh, we go from this prototype to this prototype. And in 2008, you have an ultra-fast imaging machine, which was really ultra-fast uh, in the processing way. Uh, this, why we have built this? In fact, in our lab, in 94, I have the idea to make a system to measure the elasticity of an organ. But it was not an imaging system. It was just to measure a global elasticity, and we developed just a vibrator that gives a punch in the body, and we have only one transducer that can follow the shear wave. And this gives rise to a company, EcoSense, which is the FibroScan, that gives a global evaluation of the elasticity. But we decide to go from this apparatus to an elasticity mapping apparatus. And for this, we need ultra-fast imaging to follow the shear propagation in the wool organ. And from this, we go to this machine. Uh, Ultra-fast, ultrasonic imaging has at least two big applications. One is the one you know, shear wave elastography. You can follow tissue motion induced by a shear wave in the body. And like this, you can do elasticity image. And all of you know this technique, and we will speak of this technique today. But now, when you have 10,000 frames per second, you can measure other kind of motion. You can measure blood motion. And you can go in the ultra-fast Doppler imaging. And because you have so many frames per second, you can have a huge sensitivity to measure blood flow. And this is what I want to show you now. Uh, you know that in conventional Doppler, you have two kind of modes. Or you want to make an image. It is color flow imaging and you can measure the mean velocity on each pixel for, from the blood. 
but you have also what is called spectral Doppler technology, where locally you can measure the velocity of the blood and uh, have a spectral analysis. Usually these two modes are different, and what we can do, you are or this or this. When you do ultra-fast, you can have two together, and this gives you the following. If you do just do conventional flow imaging, when you want to measure the flow of blood, you have a small amount of time on each line. When you do power Doppler, you can stay on the same pixel a very long time. These two techniques give you color flow imaging or uh, spectral Doppler imaging. But when you do ultra-fast Doppler, you get 1,000 times per second the full information on the whole image. That is to say you can combine uh, the advantage of the two techniques. But you have something more. If you play <coughs> ultra-fast Doppler, you have <coughs> a sensitivity to blood flow which is really very new. Let us look at a rat brain. Do conventional Doppler imaging on a rat brain and use the 15 megahertz probe and look at a power Doppler image of a rat brain. You see some structure, but really very poorly. Now replace this technique by ultra-fast Doppler, obtain 1,000 frames per second, and on each pixel, compute the velocity of the blood flow. And now, look the image you get. You have an image where you see all the vascularization of the brain, and you have this with a sensitivity which is much better than here. You can increase the sensitivity by a factor of 50. That means you can measure flow which are smaller than one millimeter per second. You can do this on 2D image, but you can do also this uh, by moving your probe to have 3D image of the vascularization of the brain. And if you play this, you can do the following. This is always on rat. You can move your probe, acquire the power Doppler information, and from this, when you have the 3D data, you can look a complete image, a 3D image of the vascularization of the brain. And you can play with this. Uh, you have a very good spatial resolution, typically 100 micron by 100 micron. And you can go some step more. You can look very deep vascularization in the brain of a rat. And you can even go inside the brain uh, and you can uh, make a walk in the brain to look all the vascularization in the brain. This is ultrasound. It is not MR, it is ultrasound. Now, this is on rats, on small animals, but you can also look for, for example, epileptic seizure. You can create some epileptic seizure by injecting some drug, and you can follow in real time the blood volume, and you can see that there are cortical waves that propagate in the brain of a rat. You can measure the velocity of these uh, blood flow waves that are moving along, and, uh, along the brain, and you have a very good spatial resolution, and you have at least five frames per second for this kind of image, which is quite better than MR. Now, this can also be used not only on rats, but for clinical ultrasound. And you can go on babies, preterm infant, and you can directly, through the fontanellum, put the probe, and you can obtain this kind of image of the vascularization of the brain. And you have this, but you have this real, in real time. And you can observe this, sorry, I you can observe the vascularization during the pulsatility, and you can have access from this to a lot of data on the brain. For example, you can move a spot and measure locally the power Doppler spectrum on each point. And from this, 
you can have access directly on the preterm baby to the maximum velocity of the blood in each pixel and the minimum velocity. And from this, ah, you, something is missing here. From this, you can make a map of, resist, of the resistivity index in the brain, uh, and you can have resistivity index map. This is a lot of information that you get directly without any contrast adjunct, just because you are ultra fast and ultra sensitive. Now, this is very interesting for brain, uh, for functional imaging, but to measure with such a sensitivity, the microvascularization can be also useful for cancer diagnosis. And we are looking, comparing this technique that don't need to use the any contrast agent. We can compare, for example, on a small tumor which is implanted in a mouse, we can compare perfusion imaging, where you need to uh, inject a bolus of sonoview, and you can look how long it takes for the perfusion uh, to come back, and you can have this image, and you can compare this directly with what you have with ultra-sensitive Doppler. You have the same kind of information, but you don't need any contrast adjunct. I, I will not say that this will kill the the necessity to have contrast agent, but with this technology, you can think to have an access directly to all the microvascularization of the body. Just to conclude, this is one example of application of ultrafast imaging. Ultrafast, ultrasound imaging is a concept which is strongly link, linked to the concept of holography in optics. And when you have ultra-fast imaging with plane wave, you can first look to the shear wave uh, elastography and where you have a very good sensitivity and you can have a very good precision. But beyond elastography, many new modalities are coming, ultra-fast Doppler. Uh, you can also follow cavitation. You can do ultra-fast contrast imaging and you can do functional ultra-fast, and there are a lot of future for ultra-fast imaging, and I will thank you for to listen to me. Thanks.